In this video, we will be talking through building GPTs using OpenAI's newly released no-code interface for making custom chatbots. If you're looking for the real introductory stuff, like where is it, how do you build something simple, go check out part one of the series of videos. Uh, in that one, we will take you through step by step of how to build one um, using some of the more basic functionality. This video it covers the more advanced functionality where we're connecting our chatbot with our own custom API, completing that authentication process such that our chatbots can not only provide us with text, but can also take actions on our behalf. And today we're going to be using a real life example. So one of my passion projects is a children's education app called Maomi Stars. And oftentimes we will receive inquiries from our users who email in, they might be asking about bugs or about you know, how they can subscribe to this or that. So a very common use case for our customer service agents is to look up a user's user ID based on their email address, and then using the user ID, fetching more information about that user's current play status from our MongoDB database. But of course, we haven't really had the resource to build out the whole admin interface. So it's a little bit clunky for us to retrieve that information right now. What we're gonna do is instead of trying to build a complicated interface, we're just gonna use ChatGPT as the interface. It's a natural language interface where customer agents can just type in, what's the user ID of a user with email, blah, 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 and then ask questions about that particular user and leverage our APIs that we're gonna give it access to, to fetch information from our database. So we're gonna see how we do this using this no-code GPTs feature. And before we start, just wanted to give you a little um, sense of our schema. Inside our game, we have this concept of a user. And in the context of this kid's educational app, the user is typically a parent. And it will have a user, a unique user ID associated with it. It will have an email associated with it, and also a subscription, whether it's still a free tier member or silver tier, gold plus tier. And under each account could be a number of different players, and these tend to be the kids. For example, if there are two different kids playing two different levels of the game, they will have separate profiles. And each player is identified by something called the player ID underscore V2. So here in this example, we have two players, they have different nicknames. And this is just an expansion of some of the data that's associated with a player profile. So for example, you can see how many star coins they have earned in total, their last play date, what color kitty they've chosen to be their friend in the game, their nickname. We can also see what dialect they're learning. But yeah, let's switch over to the OpenAI interface and check out this chatbot. Let me just show you how it works and then we'll go under the hood and explain how we did it. So let's say the customer service agent got an email from an email address testtest at gmail.test and they need to find out more information about this user. Well, the first thing it needs to do is to find the user ID of this, um, of this user. So what is the user ID of user with email test at gmail.test and then ask, does this user have a subscription? If so, which tier? Now it's talking to my API again and retrieving information. All right, cool. Uh, how many play player profiles are associated? with this user and what what are their nicknames 
what devices are they using to access the app? Hey, what happened to it? Set up this. Oh, there we go. Maybe it doesn't know what that field is called, let's say. Oh, maybe maybe I didn't pass it the information. All right, let's ask it something else. Um, what, when was the last time each player played the game? Very cool. So you can see how a tool like this, and of course you can add more functionality to it, could become the next generation of interfaces. We don't need to build like all these drop downs and all, all these like structured interfaces anymore. Now let's go under the hood to see how it's done. To go under the hood, we click on this down menu, we go to edit GPT. And let's go into configure. This is where we see the settings. So um, we gave it a name, it's a description. This is a tool for customer service agents for Maui Stars app, a mobile app for children to learn Chinese, to use to conduct operations needed to provide support to users. And these are some conversation starters for it makes it easy for testing. And so what um, we've already explained some of these other features in the previous video. So here we're going to focus on the actions. So what are actions? If you click into it, okay, this is the part where yes, it's no code, but there is a little bit of code. Um, so the way you create an action is to paste your API schema based on the Swagger specification. It's also called the Open API specification. And this is really confusing because Open API has nothing to do with Open AI. Open API is just a way of specifying your APIs in a way that's very comprehensive and clear. So you just paste that in. And based on this information, uh, the chatbot will know which APIs it has access to and when to use which API. So let me just walk through it step by step. So this is based on the like a certain version of the open API specification. And we have a title, description, terms of service, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's, so here is a field called servers. And so this is the endpoint that the service is calling to fetch, to trigger an action. And the uh, routine method is called API key. And this is a name that I gave it. So when we come down to the components, you'll see that I defined what this actually means at a later stage. Yes. So here we have something called paths. And each item, each object inside paths is one action that it can take. I, I gave it two. The first one I gave it is to fetch user ID from Firebase. It's a get request. I also gave it a tag called user. So what OpenAI will do is just to, it's just for categorization of the different endpoints. The summary is this, API will get the user ID based on the user's email address. And the dis okay, description is the same. The operation ID is just a unique ID that is given to this particular action. The parameters that this API needs is just one. And the name of it is called email. And it should be included in the URL query. And the description of it is that it, it needs to be the email address of the user that we're searching for. 
And is it required? Yes. And it is a string. And then this is a specification of how we expect uh, the responses to come back. So the, the response will be just a plain text. And it's also a string that's returned because it's actually like the user ID. And then there are some other error codes to, to say if it didn't work, then what happened? So that's one endpoint. The second endpoint that we gave it is called get user data simple. Basically, it's just if you're if you have a user ID, you can fetch that information that I've shown here. Then this bit is a little bit more complicated. So it says get an array of player profiles belonging to this particular user account. And uh, likewise has an operation ID, which is just a unique identifier. And here, it, I just happened to make it exactly the same as my um, endpoint, but it doesn't have to be. And in terms of parameters, again, it only takes one parameter, and that's the user ID. And it's required, and the user ID is a, a, is a string. And here's where it gets a little bit more uh, complicated. So the response, is a JSON object, and it will return something called uh, player profiles. And this comes in the form of an array. And within each array could be one player or two player or three player profiles. And then each of these are called items. And the schema for each player is defined underneath in a section called components. And the benefit of using components is just if you needed to refer to this in multiple places in, in the schema, you don't have to write it all again. So here's the components. As I mentioned before, I made a mention of API key up in the security section. Here I'm defining what API, API key means. So the type is API key. And the name of the parameter that we use to pass in the API key is called x-api-key, and it should be included in the header. And then the other thing that we specify down in these components section is this thing called players. So you can see here, under players, we've specified that there's um, there's a user ID, which is a string. There's a player ID, a V2, which is a number, a list, a star coins, total star coins, blah, 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 blah. So this is essentially all of this stuff. And we're just listing it out for ChatGPT so it knows what it's going to get back. Okay, And it's just defined as a component because it's very long. And we might want to reuse it in multiple places. So we just give it a, a name. This part was a little bit painful to create, but once you've put that in, it will automatically populate this bit for you. So there are two available actions. One is fetch user ID from Firebase, and then the second one is get user data simple. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky because most APIs that you have would probably be secured in some way. And there are different ways of doing this. So if we click into edit, you can see that you can either have a completely open API that has no authentication, but this could be subject to abuse. So most APIs would have some kind of authentication. And then there are two main ways. One is called an API key, which is the one that I'm using. And the second one is called OAuth, which is token-based. Um, we won't be talking about that in this video. And for an API key, you need to have the actual key, which is a, a string that you paste in here. And this auth type, you might be thinking, whoa, I have no idea what these three things are. I found a pretty good article which kind of explains it. I'll paste this in the paste this link in the notes below. So it's basically saying if you're using API keys for your authentication, 
there are a number of different ways in which you can pass the API key in an HTTP request. The first method is called x-api-key. And this is the most popular choice for including API keys in headers because it is the way that's used by Amazon AWS API Gateway, which is what I use as well. So it is a custom header convention for passing in your API key. The another way is called basic authentication. So basically it looks something like this. And then there's a third method called bearer authentication. So you can read this in your own time. And then finally, the, there's another way which is not passed in through the header, but passed in through the query. But anyway, this is a document for you to refer to, but I'm going to be implementing this today. And so the way we do it, and honestly, it took me a while to figure this out, is you choose custom, and then you type in x-api-k, save, and you're done. So in the demo that I did just now, you can see that I asked for a user ID first, and then it went to fetch the data. So using this action and then using this action. But let's see if I ask directly for the user's information without giving it the user ID, whether it knows how to call this one first and then call this one. So let's save it and then go start a fresh chat. Actually, I actually have no idea if this is going to work. Okay, this is a fresh chat. Let's say, what are what are the nicknames of the player? profiles associated with a user that has emails test at gmail.com. So the, the action that fetches this nickname information, that can only be called using a user ID. But here I am only giving it the email. So I'm testing to see if it knows how to call both endpoints. And yes, you can see that's exactly what it's doing. That's so clever. So now it's first calling, getting the user ID. And then here it's, it's passed that user ID to the second action and came back with this. So this is how um, this works. And there, you, know, you can use your own APIs. There's also a raft of actions that you can give GPTs by using uh, Zapier, but I personally am a little bit concerned about giving Zapier so much access to my Gmail and calendars and stuff, so I still prefer to use my own APIs. So hope that was helpful. Oh, if you want to learn more about how to build this for yourself, with your own interface and with more control, you can look at my other videos called Assistance API. That basically has very similar functionality to this no code GPTs interface, except it's all done with code, which gives you more flexibility to build your own front end and to integrate it into your other products.